Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Benjamin from AWS. I'm joined today by Sherry from Aviatrix. Hi, Sherry, thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, Sherry, tell me what Aviatrix is. Aviatrix is a cloud networking company. Our product uh, serves cloud engineers for all things networking. Okay, um, today we kind of wanted to talk about the architecture that you recently proposed, which is the services and transport architecture. Um, I know that traditionally what we see in a lot of customers is if they have multiple VPCs and multiple accounts, they typically just sort of like connect them directly to their on-premises environment over Direct Connect. Um, what does this architecture look like? How did you how did you come about developing it? Yeah, that's right. So that uh, in the beginning, the architecture is simple. They just have direct connectivity. But once more AWS accounts are uh, created as business units and teams adopting AWS and more VPCs are created, they start to hit limit of um, number of uh, VPCs that can connect through a direct connect. And they also um, hit a limit we call impedance mismatch. It takes a few minutes to create a VPC, but when it comes to connecting to on-premise network, you often have to go through a change control and that can take from days to weeks of time. Imagine if you create, each time you spin up a new VPC, you have to go through that process, right. that really slow down. Um, a third challenge we see is uh, we call a skill gap. And that is, you know, the traditional networking concept uh, such as BGP, BARF, really scare of cloud engineers from running the network. Okay, so that limitation that you mentioned is uh, 50 virtual interfaces on top of a Direct Connect um, link. Now, we recently launched Direct Connect Gateway, and that sort of alleviates this to some extent, but if you are spread between multiple accounts, you're still going to be limited um, by 50 virtual interfaces because the Direct Connect Gateway cannot span multiple accounts. That's so that's correct. still very much the case which you're trying to solve. You're also trying to solve the problem of just agility. You don't want that problem of um, having to configure an on-premises device, which maybe can't be as easily automated, and you're look, you're trying to get sort of BGP and those and those maybe more complicated networking elements um, away from the cloud um, and sort of like make this more, I guess, software defined. That's correct. So, what is what does this architecture look like? What, what are you proposing to build? So, uh, we propose to divide the network into two parts: the transport layer and service layer. Okay. And uh, in the transport layer is um, represented by a transient VPC, and its purpose is to serve connectivity from spoke VPCs to on-prem. Um, if I can draw a picture of how this would look like. So would this be a new VPC that you're creating for the purposes of yes, this? Yes, yes, this would be a new VPC. Um, you would deploy Aviatrix gateways um, in uh, two different AZs to create uh, redundancy. And um, and this will work with VGW. This You still can have your direct connect to your on-premise. And in the transient VPC, we run BGP between the transit gateway and the VGW. So, so how do the VPCs gain access to on-premises in this in this scenario? Mm. So when you a new VPC is stood up, the controller, Aviatrix controller, which is deployed in the cloud, will inform the gateway to propagate the cedar blocks to on-premise through BGP route exchange. I see. So really BGP is running over the reconnect, but just from here and that sort of limits where, where BGP participates. Everything above it is sort of like software defined, more agile. What does the connectivity then look like from, from, from this VPC to a certain VPC? Do I need to create a, uh, an Aviatrix gateway here as well? Yes, you need to launch the Aviatrix gateway in the VPC where you want to build connectivity. And like you said, it's all software defined. Uh, these spoke VPCs, they do not run BGP. And that has a few advantages. Okay, um, so um, two Aviatrix gateways in every VPC that participates, do they then connect in like a mesh network or do I get to select specifically who's talking to who? Yeah, that is policy driven, so you get to select. You get to select, uh, it's up to your 
uh, uh, policy to define if there should be a connectivity, or by, but the connectivity is by design, not by default. Right. So what if some of these VPCs aren't necessarily in the same region? Um, that is totally fine because we are we are agnostic to where the VPCs is located. It can be cross-region, could be inter-region. Okay, so it's IPsec VPN. You don't really care where the connecting partner is. Um, I guess this is kind of like similar if you're connecting the different VPCs to peering, although you can do this cross-region, but it's also encrypted all the time. That's correct. If you can do AWS peering, you can do uh, inter-region peering. It's the same um, simplicity. And uh, we also automated this. We provide REST APIs and uh, Aviatrix Terraform provider give you a template so you can spin up. Um, we're a big believer of network as code. Right. And, and that's why I guess I really like this is because um, this really helps you to match the same level of automation that you've come to expect with your workloads that are running in AWS. Now you can match that with your networking. You handle that BGP piece just once. Everything else becomes just um, created on the fly. So I really like this. And thank you very much for sharing this with us. And thank you. Thanks for watching. This is my architecture.